what's up everybody echo just landed on disney plus this week and for the first time that i can remember certainly for a series like this they actually released all episodes available for immediate streaming so let's get into the whole series and have a discussion about how good i think it is so straight off the bat i will actually say i did enjoy the show i thought it was really really good and so much of a, a better show than what we've seen from Marvel Studios recently because what it's doing so well is it's throwing back to those Netflix characters um, that so many people really really love and are desperate I think to kind of get more involved into the MCU especially Daredevil but also others like the Punisher so this is a good step in that direction of actually bringing them in. It was strange because earlier on this week I saw a load of headlines that said that the Netflix shows are suddenly canon. Well They've been canon for ages, that's not new news, we knew that. And Echo brilliantly brings back so many beloved characters, as well as portraying herself as well. It's such a good show uh, and a great story of hers too. I also have to say, the actual acting and performance from Alakwa Cox in this as Echo is brilliant. I think she's so good at that role. Obviously, I feel like it's a role that's made just for her as an actor, but at the same time, it's the way that you deliver that role because ultimately you've got a character who never says a word throughout the entire series and yet you don't lose anything because of that. She's so good at it that, you know, the, the physical performances that she gives tells the whole story. You really can invest in the character even though she doesn't say anything. Um, and a lot of people before the show came out, I saw they were kind of really nervous about it because they didn't think that they could necessarily kind of go with a show that, um, you know, had a lot of sign language in it and then it would be difficult to follow. It's really not. It's really not difficult to follow. It's actually really easy and it's, it's so brilliant to watch it's fascinating to see and actually I feel like it really adds something because it's really different you don't really see that in any Marvel shows prior to this so it has that freshness to it and a, and a different energy and a vibe that you don't really get from anything that Marvel have done before but it's brilliantly well done and it's captivating and it really draws you in as an audience so I have to say the performance from Alakwa is absolutely brilliant I really really liked it and um, yeah massive credit to her because I think she did so so well in that role and um, yeah can only say good things. In addition to that, you also had quite a few side characters that were in there and they too were really, really good and, and watchable. I love Biscuits. I think he's absolutely brilliant. He's He brings that kind of comedy element into the series. And in some ways, I feel like this is perhaps where the Marvel shows and films more recently have kind of been letting themselves down is that they've gone too heavy on the humour. And you look at Love and Thunder as being the best example for that. It's just such a goofy film, film that it's kind of awful. But the, the reasons why I think this works better is because it's the side characters that kind of do the humour, as opposed to the main character who ends up kind of being belittled and just becomes a bit of a joke. So they kind of got the blend right with this, whereas I feel like in the past, you know, Thor's just become a bit of a clown. Um, and the same with She-Hulk as well. They just kind of become these comedy characters rather than anything serious. So it's difficult for the, the audience to kind of really engage with them because they can't take them seriously. Whereas with this, Echo is brilliantly focused and driven emotionally and it makes her scenes, you know, really, really kind of authentic and engaging and you can kind of see the passion behind her and what she's trying to do and that she's very emotionally driven. So it's very serious. It's a very serious character with, um, you know, a, a big family dynamic that's involved in this show as well and her relationship with them, but also with uh, with Kingpin too. Um, so yeah, it's got a very serious tone and it would do because obviously it's connected to the, the Netflix shows. So you've got that. But Biscuits just brings in that comedy element that just kind of lightens it a little bit. And in the same way that you get Foggy in Daredevil, I felt like those two characters were actually very similar in a lot of ways. They just provide that comedy element so that you can allow the main character to be intense and driven as you'd expect them to be, rather than being there as a clown like Thor has become. But what the show does really, really well, in addition to obviously having a really great story, it brings back Kingpin. And ultimately that is gonna be something that really drives these shows forward. We've got Daredevil Born Again coming, obviously, hopefully very soon. Um, and Kingpin is gonna be a massive, massive player in that. It's so good to see him back because that is such a good character, so brilliantly acted. And his presence on, on the screen is absolutely intense. You really feel the weight of that character as you should do. So, you know, to bring him back, oh, I mean, I loved him in Hawkeye. I thought he was great in that too. So the fact that they didn't kill him off at the end of the Hawkeye series and actually allowed him to kind of survive and, uh, and come back into this Echo series and the way that they set it up at the end, there's a, like a post credit scene after the final episode where you sort of see how Kingpin is going to make his, his comeback and that's probably going to bring back Daredevil. Um, so it's a beautiful setup because throughout the whole series, he's obviously involved, um, you know, 
Echo kind of sees him as like this uncle figure and he very much sees her as like more like a daughter figure, I would say. But it works really, really well. Um, the dynamic between them is brilliant on screen. Um, so he's massively involved and because of that, it adds a lot of gravity um, to those scenes that he's in because his performance is so intense. You never really know what he's going to do. He's one of the best villains that has ever been in the MCU, if you obviously count all of those Netflix shows as canon. Um, he's up there with Thanos for me because the, the intensity behind him, kind of unpredictable. You never really know when he's going to snap. Very emotionally driven. And you can kind of... He's not like a throwaway character. He's not a throwaway villain like you get in a lot of Marvel movies, which are quite often criticised for just having a villain problem. It's because they come in for one film or one show and then they're gone, so there's no continuation. Whereas obviously with Thanos, they did it really well, and I feel with Kingpin, they do it exceptionally well again. So that then leaves us into the question of Daredevil, who makes an appearance in the show in the very first episode, and then you never see him again. And... I don't think it does any damage to the show in any way, shape or form. It's always so good to see Daredevil. He's one of my favourite characters uh, throughout anything that Marvel have ever made. And it's, uh, it's always so good to see him. And at the moment where he's in it, that's where I'm on the edge of my seat. I always so desperately want to see Daredevil back. So I felt with She-Hulk that it was more like damage limitations to bring that character into a show that not a lot of people liked uh, and I didn't like. It was more a case of bring in Daredevil so that he's there, but just don't harm the character. Don't damage that character. And they just about get away with it. There are, it's not perfect by any means in She-Hulk when he's in it, um, but they do allow him to have like a hallway fight scene, which is really, really good. And they don't really do any significant damage to the character. He's a little bit more um, kind of relaxed and laid back and less intense than what we've seen him prior, but not not so much that it's terrible. So they, they just about got away with it with She-Hulk. So naturally we bring him back in again with the Echo series and he's only in it for a very short time. And it's another fight sequence where he's just absolutely brilliant. And it's just, it's so, so good to see that character back doing that again. I love it. So that was the highlight of the whole show for Echo for me, which isn't to take anything away from the rest of it because I still think it's a great show. But just as a personal highlight, having Daredevil in it was just really, really good. And it sets up that Daredevil series that's coming so beautifully well because he's obviously canon. We know that he's involved, but we now also know, I suspect, what kind of gets him into the limelight and, and versus Kingpin again. Because, spoiler alert, the whole series kind of runs around the idea that Echo obviously tried to shoot Kingpin and then leave him. Um, and then almost tries to kind of start like a bit of a war against what's left of, of his people, um, of his group. And she very much, at times, kind of wants to just destroy everything that Kingpin has created. And then at other times seems to want to rule them. Um, you know, there's a, a great line that she says, signs, in it, where it's, uh, you know, it's time for there to be a queen pin or something along those lines. And it and it and it's brilliantly well done. And obviously you can see the, the, the kind of motive behind her and her actions in the show. But... Then obviously Kingpin comes back, she finds out that he's not dead and he turns up because he's very emotionally invested in her, um, sees her as this kind of daughter figure and tries to bring her back. Almost very forgiving of the fact that she shot him in the face. Um, most people wouldn't be and you never really know if you can trust Kingpin to kind of just forgive someone for doing that. But as they rightly point out in the show, the relationship between the two of them has always been one built on, on violence essentially because that's the nature of Kingpin's life um, and that's never been sheltered or hidden away from Echo. So it's uh, it, it kind of works in a, in a brilliant way and throughout the series, Kingpin just basically wants to bring her back um, into his empire uh, and even promises her a part of it to herself, her own part of that empire, but you're always still going to be under his influence to an extent. And it doesn't really work out because of course you, what you end up with is Echo fights back, doesn't really want to join him, understands that he was responsible for the death of her father, so you know doesn't forgive him in any way for that. Um, and by the end of the series, through one means or another, there's obviously a big showdown and Kingpin eventually kind of just gives up and, and runs off for reasons I won't I won't spoil. But um, basically, yeah, he, he ends up going back to New York and she stays with her, her proper family, her real family. So that leaves Kingpin flying home very much distressed and unhappy uh, that he didn't get what he wanted. And while he's talking to somebody on his private jet, the news comes on and there's this big discussion on the discussion on the news channel about the fact that... Uh, 
there is an election going on in New York and the people that are running for mayor at the moment aren't that great. And what these news journalists are saying is that it would take somebody who is a bit of a, a, a brawler and more of a person of the people to come in and there was still an opportunity for somebody else to come in and kind of uh, run for mayor and they thought would get it. Enter Kingpin. And that is the perfect setup, I think, for Daredevil Born Again, because you've basically got Kingpin is going to be going for this role, presumably, of mayor and Daredevil Matt Murdock is obviously going to be very un unhappy about this because, you know, he'd rather see Fisk go behind bars. So there's obviously going to be a massive dynamic. It's a brilliant setup and I'm really looking forward to the show. The show allegedly has had a lot of problems in production. Uh, apparently the script got thrown out the window. A lot of the writers got fired and, um, you know, there was a whole load of drama about it and everyone's really worried. But the rumour that I've heard is that the reason why they've done that is because they want to bring back the Bullseye character from season three of Daredevil, who, um, after Daredevil basically defeats him, um, actually is alive at the end of that series. So that window of opportunity has always been there. Marvel could always have brought him back. Um, and if they do bring him back in Daredevil Born Again, I will be very, very happy because that portrayal of Bullseye was so, so good. I always think back to that Colin Farrell version in the Daredevil movie that came out years and years and years ago, and it was dreadful. Um, whereas with the Daredevil Netflix series, um, not just the portrayal of Daredevil, but also Bullseye was fantastic. It was really, really good. A villain you genuinely hated, and um, it will be brilliant to bring that back into a, another series i'd love to see that and you'll have kingpin there as this driving force behind it running for mayor and inevitably i reckon will probably either bring back bullseye himself as his kind of like um behind the scenes henchman um who daredevil's trying to stop or it will be a case of bullseye comes back and wants vengeance against daredevil for effectively trying to kill him so you know there's different ways that they could go with it but the the overall storyline i think is going to be brilliant because it's always brilliant. I love those shows. I really, really love that series. Um, I just wish that there's going to be a cameo by The Punisher. That's the only thing. I mean, it's rumoured. There are rumours, but whether it's true or not, I don't know. I hope it is. I really hope it happens. One of the other characters that also gets mentioned and you actually see um, a bit of a throwback to in the Echo series is Hawkeye. Uh, because, of course, the first time we see Echo is in the Hawkeye series. Um, and how brilliant it was to have a reference back to that. Although, technically, it wasn't Hawkeye. Technically, it was Ronin. Let's get it right. Um, but, you know, Clint Barton, basically. So, ultimately, that was really, really cool. I liked that. I liked that throwback. Um, and it sort of brings in Hawkeye into that kind of street-level um, Avengers role, if you like. Whereas, you know, in the past, you always see him going off with the Avengers proper and, and having all of these intergalactic you know, space battles and all this kind of stuff. So bringing him back down to that street level was something I really liked in the Hawkeye series. And naturally he's connected. So, you know, Echo's got a connection to Hawkeye slash Ronin. Echo's got a connection to Daredevil and Echo's got a connection to Kingpin. And all of that wrapped up just works out really, really nicely. So um, I really love the idea that we've got this potential kind of street level direction that we can go in with some of these characters. And again, if the Punisher becomes part of that, that will be brilliant. I'm not so worried about any of the other Defenders, if I'm, if I'm entirely honest. We obviously had the Defenders show on, on Netflix. None of the other characters except maybe, maybe Jessica Jones. But I think Luke Cage and Iron Fist never really hit the heights that Daredevil did. They certainly never got, you know, the, the, the third series that Daredevil did. Um, Punisher for me, though, was just uh, uh, kind of out on his own. But he's still, that, he's still connected to all of those storylines and those characters. So I would really love for them to kind of go down that road. Uh, and I think the direction that Marvel is going at the moment is you've got multiple different avenues of different groups of characters, not necessarily one big group like we've had before with previous Avengers movies. There's going to be a different load of groups at different levels doing different things. So there's going to be, you know, a street level version of it. It's heavily rumoured rumored that Spider-Man is going to go down that road. And then you'll have your kind of main kind of galactic Avengers, if you like, where it will be very Captain Marvel led. There's also the Young Avengers um, and there's obviously the Guardians as well. So there's there's different avenues that you can go down. The What If series, series two, that also opened up, uh, well, even series one, uh, a few more groups that they could put together into this as well. I'll discuss What If in a different episode. 
Um, but for the time being, let's just say this with Echo. I think that it was a really, really good show. I, I love the story. I love the theming of it. Um, it actually has some connections to the What If uh, season two, um, which we'll come on to in, in another episode, as I say. But if you've seen that, you'll know what I'm talking about um, when it comes to the background story of Echo. It will be weird, I think, to, to see whether if they do any more content with Echo, if they expand on what she has now, which is essentially powers. So she's kind of going beyond that sort of street level. So whether she remains street level with the other characters in, in say, Daredevil or whatever series they do, um, it'll be interesting to see, does she stay a part of that or does she go elsewhere because she's effectively got um, abilities now um, without spoiling it. So it's kind of, I don't really know what they're going to do with that character. Do they need to do an Echo season two? I don't personally think so. I feel like Echo is a bridge between certain things. It's a little bit of a bridge between Hawkeye and Daredevil. Um, and we, we've kind of seen that happen with other things before, but that's not to say that we won't see Echo again. I just feel like it will be in something else rather than her own series. If she does get her own series, I think it'll be really good, but I'm not really sure where they'll go with it. So um, that'll be interesting to see. The other group, of course, that you could potentially have going forward will be Midnight Suns. And I really, really hope that they do go down that road. I felt that like perhaps Werewolf by Night was a bit of a uh, an introduction to that and also Moon Knight as well. So um, there is the potential to be able to do it. Uh, we've obviously got a Blade series that I, so far as I know, is still happening. Um, that could be connected into to it as well. Um, Ghost Rider, The Punisher could be a part of that as well. So Midnight Suns, I hope, is something that they do go down, but that will be a very, very different and very dark um, road to go down, which is why I think it will be its own separate thing. Perfect for The Punisher, perfect for Moon Knight. Um, and again, similarly, Ghost Rider and Blade will fit really, really nicely into that. I can kind of see the foundations of it being laid, and I hope that they do it because that will be a, a brilliant very different, very edgy road to go down, which we've not really seen before, but with some really beloved and great characters. So fingers crossed for that. But, you know, whether Echo goes down that road, you know, potentially she could. Um, and it, I think that's the thing at the moment is you've got all of these characters that are making all of these shows for, and it's kind of which group do you put them in and which path do they kind of go down? So, you know, that's where I see perhaps Echo appearing again, but not in her own series, but perhaps with other people in something else. So we'll see. Overall though, I think Echo is fantastic. I definitely enjoyed it. It's probably, I'd say, Compared to the things that came out last year, like Secret Invasion was very disappointing. I really didn't like that at all. I found it very difficult to watch and had to force myself to watch a lot of it because it was very, very dull in my opinion. Um, and then the other thing that came out last year was, of course, the second season of, of Loki. Um, it was good. I, I felt of the two series that came out last year, it was the better of the two. Um, but I feel like the, with the way that that finished, you can kind of leave Loki alone now. It's a story that's been told and it's been told multiple times. And, you know, they've, they've ended that character up to million times now and he always comes back. So I feel like the way that that series finished, it's kind of time to kind of call it on that character a little bit. Um, but I felt like Echo was a little bit better than Loki se season two because season two of Loki wasn't as good as season one. Um, I felt like they were just kind of dragging it out a little bit. But I like the way that they ended Loki and they just put him in a position where he can kind of carry on existing in the MCU, but you don't need to see him. So with Echo, though, there's so much potential what you could do with that character and all these different groups that she can be a part of and different paths you can go down. And it opens up all of these things for Daredevil, which is always really cool. So, yeah, I really, really liked it. I really enjoyed it. Please do watch it because I think it's worth seeing. I definitely do. Um, and with that said, on that bombshell and a positive note, it's time to end. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you guys real soon.